In this video, we're going to cover the top five reasons not to take the CFA exams. Now, personally, I did pass all three exams and I'm glad that I did because of how much I learned. But this program is a lot of work, takes a ton of time, and it's not right for everybody. So it's important to understand the limitations of the CFA program and to consider if it makes sense for your personal situation. Reason number one to not do the CFA is if you think it will automatically get you a job in the investments industry or a promotion. Unfortunately, the CFA is not a magic bullet. Some people start the program thinking that once they finish, they'll have companies fighting to hire them, giving them job offers left and right, and it's just not the case. Even after you pass all three exams, you still have to do networking, apply for jobs, and go through job interviews. For the best jobs, you're often competing against other CFA charter holders as well, so it's not as much of a differentiator as you might think. If you do decide to pursue the CFA, do not wait until the end of level three to start thinking about your next career move. I've seen people network their way into the industry first, and then use the CFA later to move up over time. Also remember to keep developing your real life finance skills like financial modeling, learning how to put together an investment recommendation, and polishing your communication skills. These can be even more important than the CFA for actually getting a job. If you're hoping to get a promotion at your current company from taking the CFA, make sure you have that conversation with your manager sooner than later so you both are on the same page. The CFA will definitely make your resume stronger, but it's not a golden ticket, it's not automatic. Reason number two is if you're not genuinely interested in the financial markets and investing. You're gonna spend a lot of time studying for the CFA exams, so it's important to deeply consider, are you really interested in the material? Do you pay attention to the financial news for fun? Do you talk about stocks with your friends? Do you enjoy managing your own investments? The CFA curriculum will give you a deeper understanding of all of this. For example, when interest rates go up, why does that make stock prices and bond prices go down? CFA topics like the dividend discount model and fixed income pricing will give you the answer. Now, when studying for the CFA exams, it can feel boring to memorize formulas, read the textbook, and work through problems over and over again. It's normal to feel that way. But if you enjoy connecting the dots between the material and real world events, that can be a good sign that the CFA might be worth it for you. Reason number three to not take the CFA exams is if you're doing it for the money. Everybody always wants to make more money in their career, but that by itself is not a great reason to take the CFA exams. Related to the last reason, if you're not genuinely interested in finance, studying for these exams will probably feel like torture and you won't enjoy the job you end up getting with this credential anyway. Even if it pays a lot of money, you won't be happy. There are many careers out there that make a lot of money like lawyer, doctor, software engineer, the list goes on and on. So before you get too deep into the CFA program, make sure you're not doing it just for the money. Reason number four is if you're not a self learner. The CFA is a self-study program, and not only do you have to teach yourself the material, you also have to keep yourself disciplined and on track to finish all the material in time before the exam. In school, teachers feed you the information. You're told exactly what to learn, when to learn it, and what assignments to do. The CFA curriculum is more self-taught. There are courses available if you want that, but it's still up to you to put in the work. In school, you can pretty much just show up and pass, but with the CFA, you have to put in a lot of work on your own just to have a chance of passing. Pass rates are pretty low. To pass the CFA exams, you have to be self-aware and identify your weak points and force yourself to do extra practice in those areas. And it can be really discouraging to not understand a topic, to get stuck, or to fail an exam. It takes a special kind of self-confidence and self-motivation to keep going and finish the program. Reason number five to not do the CFA is if you're going to complain or make excuses about how difficult it is. Everybody who signs up for level one should know that on average it takes years and a thousand hours of studying to finish the program. If you sign up for the CFA program, it's important to accept that reality and tackle the challenge head on. Complaining only makes it worse for you and the people around you. Your friends really don't wanna hear about how much you're suffering. Any time you spend complaining or making excuses is time you could be using to study and learn the material. So it's important to go into this program with a clear idea of how much time it takes and how difficult it is. If you are passionate about finance and investing, 
and you're willing to sacrifice the time and effort it takes to pass the exams, then the CFA is probably a great investment for you. Remember to click the like button below and subscribe to the channel for more videos. See you next time.